In this video, we look at how to find areas under curves. And this is the third video in a four part video series on the subtopic of integral calculus. So we're in topic five here in the AI course. Topic five has two main subtopics, differential calculus and integral calculus. Now in the first video, in the four part video series, we set the scene of an overview of this subtopic and we talked about how it's all about finding areas under curves like this shaded region here. In the second video, we practice the skill of anti-differentiating terms. So in order to calculate this area by hand, we need to understand the skill of anti-differentiation. And in this video, we're now actually gonna go ahead and actually find this area. And I'm gonna show you three techniques to do so. Two, using your calculator, which is really good to understand. And then the third, doing it by hand which is important because sometimes your boundaries conditions won't be numbers, they'll be letters. And if, you, and if that's the case, you'll need to actually do this process by hand. Okay, so let's look at this graph here. I have this curve, it's a quadratic with this equation. And I want to find the area bounded by the curve and the x-axis, this shaded region here. So the area under the curve down to the x-axis between points two and six on the x-axis. So I can write out a definite integral that represents this area, and it will be the integral from two to six of the equation negative x squared plus eight x subtract 12 and I'm going to integrate it with respect to x. Now, if I go ahead and evaluate this definite integral, I will get an actual number. It's not gonna be an equation with a plus c. That would be the case for an indefinite integral. This here will actually give an area. It's gonna give a number. Just like if I asked you find the area of this rectangle, let's say, and I gave you the length and the width, the answer is an area. It could be five meters squared. So my answer or my evaluation of this, in, uh, of this definite integral will be a number which corresponds to the area of this shaded region. Okay, let's go through the two calculator methods to actually evaluate this definite integral and therefore find this area. So I bring the calculator up. Let's just go to the scratch pad. Now, if I go menu, number four, calculus, number two, numerical integral, it sets up a definite integral here. So I'm gonna go from two to six, they're my boundaries, lower boundary, upper boundary, of negative x squared plus eight x subtract 12, and we are integrating with respect to x, so the area is bounded by the curve and the x-axis, so dx. Hit enter, and we get 10.7, rounded to three significant figures. So that's the, that is the area of this, and I'll actually write this in. So the area is equal to 10.7, and that'll be some sort of unit squared. I don't have meters or centimeters here, so I could write this as unit squared. Okay, so that's the first way. Let's do the second way on the calculator now. We go across to the graphing section, and I'm going to enter this equation into my graphing section here. So negative x squared plus 8x subtract 12. Hit enter. So there we have this curve. I want to find the area between 2 and 6. So I go menu, analyze, number 6, integral, it asks me for the lower boundary. I tend to just type it on my calculator. I'm not very accurate by clicking, so I'm just gonna go across to my actual pad here and type two. And then it asks me for the upper boundary. I'm gonna go, go across to the pad and type six. Hit enter, and it locks on, it shades that area and says again, the area is 10.7. Okay, they're the two calculator methods. Let's now look at how do we find this area by evaluating this definite integral by hand. Okay, so we have the working here, and I'll talk through these steps. The first line just rewrites out the definite integral. The second line is the anti-differentiation step, and we talked about that in detail in the previous video titled Basics of Anti-Differentiation. So I won't go through this all in detail. If you're not sure how I got these three terms, I recommend going back and watching that video. So that's the anti-differentiation step. And you can see that I've rewritten my boundaries, lower boundary and upper boundary, two and six, on the right-hand side now, on the bottom and the top of these square brackets. On the next line, I just clean up my fractions. So for example, this second term has been cleaned up, eight times a half to just be 
uh, 4x squared. So that's just a cleanup step. Now, in the next line, this is a very important line here. This is called the fundamental theorem of calculus. And if we look at this diagram here, what this fundamental theorem of calculus is all about is evaluating the result of a definite integral. So if I have the definite integral between two boundaries, A and B, of a particular function with respect to X, which is what we're doing here, the answer will be the antiderivative substituting in the upper boundary, subtract the antiderivative substituting in the lower boundary. Now this looks pretty complicated, but it's not too bad. My upper boundary is six, so I substitute that into my antiderivative, which is this, uh, which is this line here. Subtract, again, I rewrite the antiderivative and substitute in the lower boundary. And then this line here, we can enter that into our calculator and we get this answer. Now you may be wondering, well, why is this different to 10.7? 32 on three, let's just check this. So 32 on three is the exact answer. Uh, that's that, that's 10.7 as well. 32 on three is, is the exact answer. And that's actually another reason why understanding how to do this process by hand is important because sometimes, probably pretty rarely in the AISL course, but sometimes the question may ask, find the exact value of the area. And in that case there, the calculator always rounds the result in both methods, the graphing method and the um, just standard calculator method will always give you a rounded result. Whereas if you do it by hand, you'll get the exact result in fraction form. But the main reason that you'd need to do this process here is that one of your two boundary conditions might be a letter instead. It might be like A or B or M. And the question will say, find the area in terms of that letter. So your final answer might be say 32 on 3A. Okay, there we have it. That is how to find areas under curves using three different methods. I highly recommend now going ahead and practicing some of these questions over in the question bank.